Hopefully it catches us. Okay, there we go. Are we live? Can everybody see us here? Hey, and uh, happy large format Friday. Is, uh, if you can hear me and this is actually going, uh, let me know down below in the chat. Um, it's not all the time I go out of the 400 West Roads darkroom because I'm like used to that workflow. So let me know in the comments if, uh, if everything looks good. You can hear me okay. There is a fan in here, so I want to make sure the audio and stuff is good too. But uh, if you can see me, happy Friday. Hey there, welcome to Large Format Live. Let's check the old screen. Okay, awesome. Okay, cool. So everybody's looking good. So, all right, uh, wind it back. Hey there, happy Friday. Welcome to Large Format Live. My name is Matt Marash. And uh, yeah, on this YouTube channel, we're dedicated to a whole ton of things, film photography, but the show that started it all, Large Format Friday. Every other Friday, we're going to be here and we're going to be chatting about something large format. Today, I'm doing some contact printing, which is an exercise you can do with any type of photography. It doesn't need to be big old negatives, but come on, they're a lot of fun to do too. I do have a little bit of catch-up work to do here in the darkroom before we start printing. I've got most of my stuff laid out. I'll kind of give you a quick rundown. So if you've never watched the channel before, welcome. I am in a black and white darkroom. This is actually one of Ohio's most inexpensive rental darkrooms. Actually, one of the United States' most inexpensive rental darkrooms. That's here at Midwest Photo in Columbus, Ohio. I'm wearing my MPEX t-shirt and my MPEX uh, printing smock that you get when you're, you're working in here. And this is a great darkroom. There's two enlargers set up. There's a Saunders LPL, which is what I'm gonna be using. It's a four by five enlarger. Off to my left or camera right here, there's also a Bessler 45. Which one is it? Oh yeah, it's the VXL. It's the big mamma jamma. It barely fits the ceiling in here. So you can print anything from, you know, microfilm all the way up to four by five inch film. And you can go bigger if you're doing contact prints like we're doing today. Okay, I'm gonna pay some, uh, I'm going to pay some bills and talk to folks here in the chat. I want to welcome everybody who is here today joining us. Um, if you want to know, um, I'm actually filming these on some really fantastical uh, Sony cameras. Um, it's because of their technology with their like high ISO capability. I can do things like this. So I can cut the lights and all it does is it just cranks up its ISO to uh, what I like to call ISO 11D just keeps on going and you're able to see everything. So you're gonna be able to see the printing process. And once I'm done on the enlarger and answering comments over here, we'll transition to our tray over here where there's not much happening right now because I still have yet to mix up the, um, the developer, but we'll get to that here in a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna go lights up so it's gonna flash really quick and then we're gonna go to some comments. Okay. So, oh my gosh, we already have 45 folks here in stream. Hey, welcome everybody. Welcome to Large Format Live. I see Devin, Electrons Needed. That is a really, really cool uh, screen name. I've got Edison in there, Mariette, Simon, Photo Nick. Lore's here, of course. Uh, if you see Lore in the comments, she is, uh, she's my fiance. She's also a mod on the stream. So be nice to her and what she says goes. That is, her word is absolute. Okay, I see Mark Full. Hey, Mark. Hey, Chris. Hey, Max. Hey, Philip. Hey, Marcos. Hey, CM. Hey, Simon. Uh, let's see. Very cool. Got Michael, Theo. Photography online. Hey, good seeing y'all. It's, it's been a while. Um, winter is like the best time ever to catch up on printing backlog, as well as uh, it's a crappy, windy day. What do we do? We stream. Well, we don't have to stream, but we print. Printing is a great way to relieve some stress, at least for me. It helps you kind of like slow down and reconnect with like the things that matter in the dark room. So your contrast, dodge, burn, and getting your, you know, getting your hands dirty in there. So actually, speaking of which, I need some gloves. I'm gonna add some gloves here. And then I'm gonna kind of show you a little bit more of the dark room layout. Well, I don't know how much I can show without shaking the camera to, to death, but uh, we'll do our best to, to do that. So I got some little nitrile gloves here and to make sure that we don't, um, you know, we don't go like too, too, too messy. I do have off camera beside, beside the mess of cables that I have. I have some, where are my cloths? Oh yeah, I've got some, uh, I've got some good old fashioned shop towels for drying things off. So um, I've probably mentioned this on the channel a few times, but like 
the best stuff you can get for photography once you're set up with the basic gear is stuff you can get at the hardware store. So these guys are awesome. They do produce lint, so you can't like clean negatives with them, but these are awesome for like keeping dry in the dark rooms. So I'm gonna try a technique I learned from uh, Mr. Alan Ross, one of Ansel Adams' assistants, wet hand, dry hand, or I'll try to do dry hand, dry hand, so I can bounce back and forth. Um, another little fun, like kind of behind the scenes thing, the way that I'm able to make this stream happen without light being contaminated from like other screens and stuff is actually, I need to, I need to hide one of my screens. I got one of my screens just off camera over this way. I have to hide it so it doesn't, uh, it doesn't leak light. And the other one I can just like turn around because it'll have to travel like 10 feet. But all the screens that give off light here in the dark room, they're also lights that have to be safe. While there's no such thing as a safe light, there are lights that emit a spectra that the paper has a hard time seeing. So our, our silver gelatin, black and white darkroom paper. And I've got that covered in like this orange stuff, or um, you can use ruby colored stuff or osier orange, uh, you know, uh, orange safe light covers. That's what's on the fluorescent bulbs. That's my main light in here. And then I also have a nice LED tubey thing that will, uh, that'll really help too. Oh my gosh, we already have Wow, we are we were already over 50 folks. So thank you so much for joining uh, this large format live. We're here in the Midwest Photo Dark Room. Uh, I see Roberto. Hey, how's it going, Rob? All right, I got Norma in here. I got Jay, Alex, Javier, another Robert. Oh my goodness, so many cool folks here. All right, awesome, awesome to uh, awesome to see everybody here. We're doing some printing. You know, the last live was like a little bit of a slower burn because. You know, it's just like talking and kind of stuff. And while that's nice, I like being able to like show you something and like produce something at the same time. So let me show you what we're printing on today. We're going to be printing on, we're gonna make printing go pretty quickly. So we're gonna be printing on some Ilford RC paper. Where's a box? There we go. This one's a very torn up box, but uh, uh, so just some Ilford uh, multi-grade deluxe RC. I like the glossy stuff, glossy prints really, really well. And then for the big stuff, I'm gonna be contact printing some 12 by 20s today as well that have never been shown on the channel. And that is some pearl paper because they didn't have glossy in the, the big sheets. So I'll make, with, I'll make do with what we have. Um, kind of fun fact, uh, Leon Taylor, he was like one of the first black and white uh, darkroom printers I ever followed on Flickr. And it's just like cool to like see Leon's work on the box. This used to host a really, really awesome old school um, film photography podcast, so yeah. All right, how we doing here? Very cool seeing everybody here. Uh, let's see. Oh, uh, Theo has a really good question regarding the different types of uh, the different types of darker materials involved. So, when would you want to use RC paper or fiber paper? Well, I have prints from both, and uh, we'll talk about the pluses and minuses of those right now. I'm actually gonna cut the fan off real quick. Once I get printing, I'm gonna put the fan back on and you're gonna hear fans spinning from the enlarger and that's to keep us safe. It is a smaller space, it's about a 10 by 10 square. So just keep that in mind for when you're doing your own darkroom printing at home. Do, do, do. Some prints, where's my prints? There's some prints, okay. So this print right here is some Ilford multi-grade RC paper. You can always tell RC paper from fiber um, right out of the box. Well, this isn't right out of the box. This is developed, but RC paper has um, has like a, a lay flat tendency. It almost never curls unless something terrible has happened, like it got like really cold or something. So RC paper is typically going to always lay flat. It also, if you hold it up to a light source, it's actually a lot more translucent than you would think. You'd think the paper's opaque, but it's not. All darkroom papers need light in order to like function well, and this is no different. Okay. Oh my gosh, we're up to 70 folks. Hey, welcome to Large Format Live. We're talking about the differences. We're printing, and before we get printing, we're talking about some differences between RC and fiber prints. We're, oh, here. And here's a fiber print. It's not the same print, but it was, uh, it was a picture taken on the same day, if that counts. By the way, if, you, if this is your first time stopping by the channel, welcome. Uh, this is Large Format. It's Large Format Friday, and I'm live. Every quarter I go live. I wish I could go live every week, but Whew, there's a lot of pre-production involved in these, but we're here in the darkroom space. I'm printing and I just got a great question from Theo. What or Theo? 
what is the difference between RC and fiber paper? And I have a, a dried fiber print that was, uh, both of these were actually made on the channel. So back in season three of LFF. So if you want to see that, uh, be sure to get subscribed and check out some of the previous season's playlists. But um, this is a fiber print. Fiber prints, um, if left to their own devices, will get all curly whirly and they, they buckle and do all sorts of wild things. The nice thing about fiber prints is they have more archival permanence. They have a lot more DMAX, so they just have a more punch, deeper blacks, brighter whites, and it's because there is a physically thicker emulsion that is backed with a, a nicer, heavier duty paper that has um, just got a more pulp in it. Um, this isn't a rag stock paper. This is technically still like an alpha cellulose. I think it's cellulose. Yeah, it's a cellulose based paper, but then it also has a barium sulfate or barita coating on it. And that just helps it glow. Now, if you can, can't already guess, I'm a huge fan of glossy. I like the glossy stuff. Now, glossy doesn't always work, especially when you get really, really big prints, because big prints have a higher chance of catching all that light. So if you're going to, when you buy a print and you place a print in your house, it's a good idea to consider the light source that you're working with. So the light that's in here, the overhead light, the white light, is just like a normal household dome light. And the reason for that is most people are going to be printing to put it in their home. If you're going to be printing for a gallery, you want to make sure your prints represent something that's close to what your gallery would use. So great question. Um, fiber prints also typically need more of everything, more development time, more washing time, more fixing time. So fiber prints take longer. And when I do those on the stream, I only do about like half as many as I could when I'm doing RC. So I'm going to try to like speed up the process, but RC prints aren't bad. Oh, and uh, just kind of a quick, you know, shameless plug because I'm already here. Uh, some of the prints I'm going to be making today, you can go to mirage.com forward slash prints and check out um, some of these prints that I'm making here on the stream today. Some of these prints, I'm actually finishing up the tail end of my birthday print sale. So back in January 2nd, I have my birthday sale. You could buy prints at a discounted price. It's the only time of the year I discount stuff. I try to keep it once a year. I don't want to be the coals of, uh, of black and white printing. So... Uh, yeah, you can check those out at mirage.com forward slash prints. Okay, let's uh, let's take a look at the comments and see how folks are doing here. All right. Gabor from Austria, welcome. There's Norma, all right. LG45, all right, from England, very, very cool. <laughs> RC gang. Yes. Okay. So I do hear some, I see some, uh, some folks that are hyped. Uh, yes, we are. We're going to be printing some 12 by 20. That's like, if it's the last thing I do today, that's what I'm going to do. Um, let me cut to the other camera. Uh, you'll be able to see these are big trays. Um, I'm printing a lot of eight by tens, but the main stuff that, uh, like the, the big stuff at the end, these are giant 16 by 20 trays. And while the camera is facing down that way, I might as well get my multi-grade developer poured out and mixed. So, Ilford multi-grade, great stuff. You know, a common question I used to get a lot was, if I'm using Ilford papers, do I have to use Ilford developers? And the simple answer is, no, not really. You can mix and match, but know that the chemicals from the same company that made the paper are typically optimized for their own papers. So you may have to tweak things like, uh, the diff like the amounts that you're using. So um, this is a one, it's a one plus nine solution. I poured, I poured about 250 mils because I'm going to put 2.5 liters in the finished tray. And going to get some water going here. It's going to get loud. My apologies. So I'm going to fill my this graduated cylinder up to a liter, dump it out, and then do that a couple more times, and that will get me, uh, get me really really in a good place for printing. Now, when you're printing big prints, that, that's gonna mean you're using bigger trays and you're gonna be using more chemicals. So just know that going into it. Every time you scale up your format or your prints, everything gets bigger, heavier, and more expensive. And the darkroom is no, no different. I'm gonna finish this off with just the last 500 mils and then we're gonna get printing. If you just tuned in, welcome YouTube land. Uh, this is large, it's large format Friday, and we are here live in the dark room at Midwest Photo. This is 
just a great rental darkroom space here near downtown Columbus, Ohio, right off I-71. And uh, yeah, they're, they're open six days a week. You can rent it out about five of those days a week because they do develop black and white film for customers in here. But it's a great little space. Uh, I'm biased because I did help build this space uh, oh so many years ago. But uh, yeah, it's kind of a fun thing. Oh my gosh, hold on. I just saw, I saw a, even though my screen is monotone, I just saw a big pop-up. What is this? Hey, Chris, thanks for the 20 bucks. Uh, Chris says, Matt, I, I have to jet and do some work. Unfortunately, I look forward to watching this over the weekend sometime. Wishing you and everyone a uh, good night. Cheers. Hey, Chris, thank you so much for stopping by. Go get to work. I don't want anybody to be late on my account. But if you are at work, you know, you can always just like leave this over and it can be like lo-fi nasally printing tunes to not work by. I don't know. But uh, I appreciate you so much, Chris. Thank you very, very much. Chris, by the way, is like OG number one supporting my habits uh, as far as prints. He might be one of my first print customers, maybe the second, but like definitely whenever something's going on, I, I see an order from Chris. So Chris, thank you so much. I appreciate you. He's also even like gone to the point of like getting me up to buying some like of the big, big stuff. So thank you so much for supporting me all this time. It, it means a lot. All right. Got Lars from LA. Very cool. All right. Andy, perfect. All right, uh, Andy asks, when you rent the darkroom, is the cost of the chemistry included? Great question. So the darkroom space here at Midwest is bring your own paper and bring your own film. So chemistry is here on tap, ready to go. So the, the chemicals I just poured, those are something that's included with the darkroom. Some of the stuff that's more intense mixing, uh, like fixer and things, those are already ready to go. They're just in like these, I don't know, kind of just uh, little spigots. So you just pour it out to the pre-measured amount that's on the instruction bottle. There's also little taped instructions on all of the graduates there. And that's all you need. If you ever forget any of this stuff, there are also here in the darkroom space, little laminated cheat sheets for things like development times and all the steps involved. They're laminated. So you can go bring them over to the sink with you, get them wet, you know, whatever. And it's all good. Oh, thank you everybody for hanging in there. I know I haven't started printing yet. I need to get to it really, really, really soon. So thank you for being so patient. Large format live here in the dark room. Let's uh, let's take the lights down. Let's go a little. Let's go a little more, a little more moody. Make sure nobody barges in on the old live stream. But yeah, here we are. I'm gonna bring the camera display over this way. So if I'm not looking right at the screen, apologize. That's uh, that's just how uh, how I can't see it right now. All right, how we doing? Hey, Chili Cayenne, welcome to the welcome to the stream. Oh, very cool! You got a public darkroom there. Awesome, GP Homes, perfect. Uh, GP, um, I did not get that box of aerial film, but it's so so funny that you mentioned aerial film because um, a long, long, long time ago. On the channel, I actually shot a long, long time ago on the channel. I shot this crazy stuff called Agfa Avifolt um, aerial film. And this was from a buddy of mine, Mr. Giles Clement. He's a fantastic um, wet plate artist and film photographer, just great photographer. Whatever he touches, he's great. But he gave me some Avifolt to test out. and. Uh, you can see I did a terrible job cutting it up myself, but these negatives have just a ton of sharpness to them, but it's on a very, very thin base. So I thought these might be cool to try and contact print if I get to it. If I don't get to it, that's that's fine. But I brought a few of those. So it's really funny. I haven't heard anybody mention aerial film in like years. And here we are. I brought some aerial film and someone's talking about it on the stream. Um, as far as what we're printing today, I'm going to start out with some 8 by 10s and, you know, kind of hang in there to the finale and we're going to print some 12 by 20 Really excited for that. It's, it's just awesome to see a big print, but one that you can just like go in on really quick. Oh, by the way, this, uh, <laughs> this piece of cardboard, this is my super sophisticated burn card. You can see it's a piece of corrugated cardboard uh, with a hole punched in with my finger. The dirtier uh, edges on there can actually work to your advantage so you don't get uh, too much haloing going on in your prints. I have another burn card in here somewhere, but uh, oh, there's also, where's the dodge tool? Well, if I can't find the dodge tool, oh, there it is. The dodge tool is usually my hand, but if you have small areas, 
to print. Uh, this is a piece of gaffer tape on just a piece of um, on like hanger wire. Call it a lollipop because it looks like one of those. And you just wave it in front of the print. That's all you got to do. So I've got my sophisticated printing tools there. That's great. All right. How's everybody doing? Oh, man, we're over 80 folks now. Thanks so much for tuning in. Well, we got somebody from the Czech Republic. Hey, welcome. Uh, Ciro asked, did you end up buying 8x10 Aerochrome with Jason and Caleb? Will you make an LFF episode? So actually, the stuff that we got was 4x5 Aerochrome. And that kind of makes it tough because I don't like have too much by way of 4x5. I do have a project in mind and I will share those once I've got it. But like, whew, when you get like one shot at this stuff and it's very, very, very expensive per sheet, it really builds up the pressure. So I have an idea for a project, but I will definitely share it once I have any sort of tangible results that aren't a, a tire fire. So yes, Ciro, I will, uh, I will post those. All right. Very, very cool. All right, we have Peter from Belgium. Very, very cool. So everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, we turned the lights down, so we are safe light now, but you should still be able to see everything that's going on. I've got the big saunders here behind me. And when you're setting up an enlarger for contact printing, uh, the only thing you need is the light source. A lens is technically optional, but what's nice about having a lens is it allows you to control yet more exposure via, via your aperture, your f-stop. So the same thing as your camera, right? We have aperture, shutter speed, ISO. Well, paper has a fixed speed. Our lens has an aperture and our, our shutter speed is essentially our exposure time that's controlled by our, by our timer. And you can see, boom, that's a whole ton of light. So uh, being able to stop that down is a big, big thing. I already have my enlarger set up to the working height that I was using, so I was printing in here the other day. I'm not going in completely naked. Doing that for a live stream is, would be just hilariously bad. So I'm not going to I'm not going to put you guys through that today. Uh, thank you for your patience so far. We're going to get right to printing. Um, all right, Got Xander in the UK, very very cool. All right, so uh, first negative. There was a negative I printed for a customer print on the birthday sale, and I really, really liked that one. And I think I'm going to start, I think I'm gonna start there. And so here's my eight by 10 negative. This is one from, this is actually the one I showed for the RC, or for the fiber print. I'm gonna print this one on RC. And you can see I have just some poorly jotted notes. Any notes are better than no notes because whenever you make small changes to things like your enlarger height, your lens aperture, how long you expose it for, if you have a multi-grade enlarger, what contrast you're selecting for that, those all matter. And being able to narrow those things down is gonna save you money and paper. So when you go into the darkroom, you're, you're making nothing but bangers, right? You're making like good print, good print, good print. And then you can like really dial in on the nitty gritty and that's where the good stuff comes. You can focus all day on trying to get like one perfect print, but being able to start getting into like decent working prints immediately is a lifesaver and notes are going to help you do that. I'm sure some of you are looking at these notes and going, uh, what is this chicken scratch? But it's just enough to get me started. So um, according to my notes, I have, whoa, what is this? I see multiple different contrast grades here. So I have nine seconds. Goose eggs, that's double zero. This is, a, this is a negative that has extreme contrast differences. There's a very thick part of the negative up here and there's incredibly thin parts down here. It was a very hazy morning. So I've found the best way to get a good working print is to start with a split grade. So split grade is where you use multiple grades of light. This is the really, really yellow dull light that's gonna give me grays. And the number five is the very, very red light that's going to give me uh, really strong black. And I'll show you what those look like through the enlarger light up here first, and then we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and make a print. So if I dial my enlarger to a number double zero and I turn, I turn the focus on, the light coming out of there is, actually, do I have something white? There we go, here's something white. The light is very, very yellow looking. And even from this camera, you can kind of tell it's got like a yellowish tinge to it. It's a little bit lighter. If I change that contrast, it's gonna change the balance of that light and now the light is like a pinkish value. It's not quite red, so there is still some light coming through. The only light that's 
Coming through this though is blue light and that's gonna give us the extreme deep black on there. Another way you can think about contrast when it comes to printing is zero and double zero are kind of like the minus on contrast and the higher you go towards five, that's like the plus contrast. So five is like plus a hundred and double zero is like minus 50 minus 100 on contrast if you were doing sliders in like Photoshop or Lightroom. So the other cool thing that I personally enjoy about working in the black and white darkroom is most of the things that we can do in Photoshop, sure, sometimes we can do them with like a click of a button, but those things originated in the darkroom. So if we have, if we take the time and we learn the process, we can kind of get that greater appreciation of where some of these extra things came from. Now, there's some techniques like unsharp mask, the thing we use to sharpen the crap out of our, our, our blurry photos, that actually also originated in the darkroom. It's a nightmare to do, but we can do it. So it's kind of a cool thing. All right, oh my gosh, let's see if we can hit 100 folks. I don't know if I'm doing a giveaway today. I'm probably not because there's too much to do, but I wanna see if we can hit 100 folks for the stream. That's always like a good landmark to hit. I know it's the middle of the afternoon on Friday, but uh, let's see if we can hit that. So please share this stream if you know anybody that's interested in black and white photography or anything darkroom. So yeah, let's get the hype going. All right, uh, how are we doing on questions? All right, no other questions. We got some new folks. Uh, no, comments are pretty silent. So hey, all right, everybody wants to see the print. So let's get printing. All right, so things I'm going to do. I'm gonna reread my notes. Whoop. Okay, nine seconds, double zero. Now where's my, uh oh, where's my f-stop? Now I know this particular print, I was printing between two, uh, I was about half a stop in. So I wasn't wide open, which is five, six, I was close to wide open, it was between five, six and eight, or like like f6.3 ish. So that's gonna be kind of my working and there's, there's that. So you can see my light when it casts on my surface is pretty wide. When you have your enlarger height that high, you need a lot more lights. So you typically need to expose for longer or you have to open up the f-stop a little bit more to make things happen. But another thing is uh, you want to have a lens that's gonna cast the right size circle and do it at a very even angle. So the lens we're using today is, actually here, let me turn that off real quick. The lens we're using today is a 110 millimeter f5.6. Now that's not a large format ready lens. That's one that's good for up to six by nine negatives, but for casting an even light on this enlarger surface, it's gonna be great. Minimal fall off from one edge of my, uh, of my base here at the enlarger to another. Some enlargers you may see don't come with these little bases here. And if they don't, you can just use a piece of plywood and then you know coat it with something nice and smooth. All right, how are we doing on questions? Ah, uh, Wandering Dreamer asks, uh, what about laptops and all the light those are giving off? All of my laptop screens and my switcher and all of my cameras actually have a small thin layer of uh, essentially ruby lith, but they have, or uh, OC Bastard Amber is another good one. Uh, that's the name of the gel. Those are just taped onto the, the computer. So if we can tape a safe light or tape a filter on a safe light, we can do the same thing with any electronic device that would emit the right, uh, the right spectrum of light that would harm our print. So. It's it's like the lowest phi hack, but it actually works like really, really well. Okay, I'm gonna aim the camera down just a smidge. So I might have like a disembodied head talking, but I wanna try to, oh, I don't wanna show the laptop too much. There we go. So you'll be able to see like a little bit more of the printing action as I'm getting down here. So I've got my negative. I do need something that's gonna hold this negative in contact. And my contact printing frame is somewhere around here. The uh, nice thing about this small dark room is everything is usually really, really close. <laughs> um, I have this little contact printing frame. I've used this one before. It's already masked out using just some uh, reflective tape. You can also use, uh, again, ruby lift tape or some sort of opaque tape. What's nice about this stuff, this reflective tape, is it doesn't have a really nasty adhesive on it, so it, it does a really, really great job. So that's just going to sit down there. I'm going to manage my cables for when I start doing bigger stuff later. And when we contact print, we wanna make sure we have the emulsion of our film touching the emulsion of our paper. So shiny, uh, pretty much everything we do in the darkroom is shiny side up. So the film base side is up and the shiny side in the case of our paper is the emulsion, emulsion to emulsion sandwich. And we're gonna get a nice contact. 
All right. Oh, we're at 94, folks. We are almost to 100. Let's uh, let's keep let's keep hyping that up. Get that uh, get that going. All right. Uh, right down below, uh, off camera, I do have a paper safe, and inside that paper safe, I have this dark bag, and inside this dark bag, we have some paper, some glossy RC, and that's what we're going to use today. I'm going to grab my paper out. So. I know this is like a little bit, a little bit sappy, a little bit silly, but I had a dream about doing a darkroom live stream like years and years ago. And this was the, a space that when I helped build it, part of that was how can I execute a darkroom live stream? And it's cool. I've already done multiples. The first one we did here in this space was actually with, uh, with Mr. Matt Day, the, the film photography YouTube legend himself. And we were here printing and oh, that live stream was was a bit messy. Uh, this one's a little more refined because I've done a bunch more, but all right, I've got my prints. Now, once it's down and we're locked in, we don't want to move this at all. Don't want to, you know, slightly move the negative or the, the paper. And I'm going to check my notes again. All right, nine seconds at double zero. And I'm also doing a dodge. And that dodge is to make sure that this thinner portion of the print doesn't get, uh, get hit too badly. All right, hey, we hit 100 folks. Thanks for everybody for tuning in. We're about to start the print. So I'm going to set my timer to nine seconds. Perfect. Okay. Ready and dodge it. Cool. Okay. So that's our double zero exposure. Looking good. All right. And then you can also see on my notes, it says eight second burn. So now I'm going to use my burn card here to burn the upper areas of the print, especially this like top left corner furthest away from the camera. So um, that's going to allow light only through that hole. And since I'm doing a contact print, I'm just going to hold this up to the light and I'm going to permit what I need through there. So eight seconds of burn. Let's let's go. All right. I probably need even more than this because my hole is it's pretty small. Okay, keep that going. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna turn it on. If you have an enlarger that has a switch to go between focus and exposure, that's a quick way to do it. Just do 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 do. I'm also gonna do a little bit extra down here. Da -da 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 -da. All right, let's try that. All right, let's throw it in the sauce. So I'm gonna remove my exposed piece of paper. The negative can hang out there. So there's my piece of paper. We're gonna switch cameras. Hopefully that camera is still on. I'm gonna verify that that camera is still on. Uh, so it's gonna be a delay on the screen, but that'll get us ready. Oh, I also need to turn my darkroom timer on. Okay, the trays are looking good. They're looking dark, but they're looking good. So hopefully we'll be able to see something. All right, minute on the clock. I've got my paper in. I threw it in emulsion side down. I'm just gonna flip it and let's see, let's see a print. Gonna agitate it from this side. All right, I can already see the edges of my print coming in. Flip it one more time. There we go. Ooh, too dark. Very foggy. Ooh, maybe I am getting some fog from somewhere. I might be getting some fog from my uh, from my big old LED. Oh no. That is way too fog. I shouldn't be getting any fog from the LED. I've tested this one before, but I know that's too much. I'm pulling it out a few seconds early. Slap it in the stop and we'll get going. Yeah, we already did a safety test, so that looks good. Anyway, um, once we do a minute of my developer, which is Ilford Multigrade, just do it in 10 seconds in a stop bath, drip it off, throw it in the fix, it's gonna need a minute in the fix before we can turn a white light on. I wonder what's causing, what's causing that? All right, well, we're gonna keep going. All right, uh, how is, uh, how's the old chatty chat looking? Cool, cool. Uh, William is asking, so how important is keeping pressure on the contact printer for prints like this? Just the weight of the glass usually suffice. Uh, William, um, I'm gonna show later, uh, you don't even technically need the glass, if you have like RC and a very nice, like large flat negative, but glass is usually fine. You don't need extreme pressure 
Um, and in fact, my 12 by 20s, I'm just gonna be laying them right on there because those negatives have enough meat that's just gonna, it's gonna hold those down. Oh no, did my camera go off? Oh no. Oh, the technical difficulties. My camera went into a, a pause, so uh, apologies. Uh, hopefully the audio is still coming in. Hello, hi. Is, is my feed coming in? Oh no. Okay, we should be good. Hello camera, I've gone black. <laughs> there we go. All right, cool, we're back. Hey, all right, at least the audio didn't cut out the whole time. Hey, we still have 100 folks, thanks for tuning in. Large format live. We've got some darkroom prints. We just threw our first one out. What I'm gonna do, uh, just to rule out any sort of weirdness, contamination, etc., I'm just going to take a piece of paper out. I'm gonna tear that piece of paper. I'm gonna leave one. I'm gonna leave one right here. I'm also gonna put one, hmm, maybe over, just over off camera behind me. And I'm just doing a bit of a safe light test. I'm just gonna leave that out for a minute. I'll answer some questions in the chat, see, uh, you know, catch up with y'all, and uh, see how my, my dark light is, uh, my safe light's doing. Uh, let's see. Uh, Devin, all right, hope the stream goes well. Got us up to screen record some. Hey, Devin, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate you, man. All right. <laughs> yeah, the darkroom uh, light went dark to simulate the actual darkroom feel. Isn't that the truth? Okay, so we got a minute here. Oh, we've, we've been out in the safe light for a minute. A minute should be good. Any safe light you have that's worth its, uh, worth its salt should be fine, should be you know safe after a minute. If it's not, you have to like drastically change the light that you're using. So in, in this case, uh, it might be the auxiliary LED I brought in. If that's the case, I'll go ahead and shut that off and we'll, we'll, you know, we'll figure something out. But I'm gonna go ahead and, I'm just gonna go ahead and process this one and see if there's any density um, to be seen on it. I'm gonna check the other, the other camera. It might actually just be the battery of that, uh, that camera already going. And if it is, it's, it's battery watch. It's time for a new, it's time for a new battery. Let's see. Ah, there it is. Wow. That is fogging, that's fogging the joint up very, very, very highly. I didn't even think, that's interesting that it's got that much fog on it. All right, hopefully we can, we can change that. Oh, something else is giving, is giving some fog. All right, um, how's that camera angle looking? Oh, it's still, still pretty dark. Let me see if I can open up my aperture on, on this guy and we can see a little bit more. But yeah, that's some fog. All right. <laughs> Carl, just call it contrast reduction. That's, that's some pretty extreme reduction of contrast. Uh, if you got contrast that's looking like that, you got some, you got some problemos. Um, but that's all right. We can, we can adapt, we can overcome, and hopefully it isn't fog from my switcher setup. Uh, the Ruby Lith usually does the trick. Let me see if I can get some more tape on uh, on that. Oh, let me change my change my camera or my camera angle so you can see that I'm still alive here. Oh no, we dropped quite a few viewers. Oh, sorry guys. Always always something with the technical. All right, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for everybody who's uh, who's stayed on this long. Large format live. We're here doing some darkroom printing. Let me switch back to my main camera angle. Hopefully this is still looking good. Yeah, okay. At least that camera is coming through. All right, thanks everybody for hanging in. Okay, good, camera's back up. Um, I have adjusted our safe light situation. Main camera looks like it's got plenty of light, but that doesn't mean our other lighting setup does. So I'm just gonna, I don't usually do this, but I'm taking this guy right to the T-Rash. So that's uh, that first, First piece of paper, junk. 
throwing it right in the trash. It is, uh, it's not worth using. So let's, let me just do another print real quick. There is a possibility that this paper sometime between when I used it on Wednesday and when I used it today has accidentally gotten fogged. That's the one downside about keeping things in a rental darkroom space. Fog happens. So, yeah, I'll just do it. I'll do one through here. I want to see this thing come to life. Sometimes you can just get it to fog from anything. Somebody gets curious, opens it up, says, hey, what's inside? And what's inside is all of your hard-earned money. So when you are using a dirt rental space, pack in, pack out. Take all of your stuff with you. Okay. So back to my heavy contrast. So we're going to do, we're going to do my nine seconds of double zero with some hefty dodge. Ready and all right, we're gonna dodge that in. Da, 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 da. Dodging, dodging. Okay. And then we're gonna burn a little extra in that top corner. Ready, go. Okay, moving, moving, moving. Okay, the extra light is coming in handy. I'm just letting this little circle of light hit the dark areas. That's all we're doing. And then I just need five or six seconds at my number five, my deepest exposure. So we're gonna go, boop. And this is just to give me a nice deep black once, uh, once we are there in printing. Doesn't take much. Let's take a look. We're gonna switch to our other angle. I'm gonna drop our paper in. And if this guy doesn't work, well, I've got extra paper. There's always extra paper. Once you do a darkroom for any amount of time, you're gonna end up with extra paper with which to work. All right, how's this one working? Oh, this one's looking a little better. Uh, I've still got a bit more fog than I think I'd like to see. Oh yeah, I wonder if somebody just opened up this paper. Well, at least RC prints are a little cheaper. <laughs> All right, yeah, this is gray. No, this is more than contrast reduction. My goodness gracious. Well, at least the black's coming in nicely on the edge, but yeah, she's she's fogged. All right, maybe, maybe I will switch this to fiber. I don't like going right to fiber, but you know, the people must be entertained. All right, five more seconds. And we'll take it into the stop. It's actually not, it's not terrible. Like if I was in college, I could probably make an excuse for it, but not in front of not in front of almost a hundred folks live. All right, flip this up. I'm gonna bring it to the ah, bring it to the fixer. Oh no, where's the rest of my? Do I need some more water. I think I need more water in my fix. I thought I already did that. Well. Let's get a bit more. I'm gonna switch my camera back to the first one. Oop. Hopefully that is getting something. All right. I could have sworn I watered my fix. All right. That just means it's extra, It's just gonna work extra quickly. It's gonna work really, really, really fast because it's extra strong. All right. Yeah, this paper's pretty fogged. All right, well, I know I can trust the paper I brought with me, so we're gonna go ahead and, uh, and use that paper. That's, that's gonna be the move. Okay, so uh, if you're tuning in, it's Large Format Friday, we're Large Format Live, and uh, here in the darkroom space at Midwest Photo, we're doing some darkroom printing. I got the safe lights on. I got some, uh, I got some pretty terrible test prints <laughs> in the drink. You know what, I might as well Maybe I'll turn on the light and, uh, and let you see what it's looking like. It's not great. I will, uh, I will not fabricate what, what it is. It doesn't look good. But you know what? Anybody that's actually done darkroom printing, they can empathize because things, things happen in the dark. Things just happen. They get out of hand. 
All right, I'm gonna turn my white lights on. You're gonna see a flash real quick, everybody, so don't, uh, don't mind that little flash of light. Not too bad, but we are, <laughs> we're, we're pretty fogged. This, uh, there's nothing that's a clean white showing up here, which tells me, yeah, this paper has received some, uh, some slight fog. What I am gonna do though, hmm, I don't think there's anything else that could cast enough fog. The screen has the ruby lith, my switcher has the ruby lith. Uh, I'm just gonna throw a safety piece of fiber paper that I have and see if we can't get, get results. By the way, those prints I just pulled out of the fix, those prints still need to rinse. So don't think you're done once once it's done with the fix, it still needs to rinse. RC prints rinse out pretty quickly. We're talking on the order of like five to 10 minutes. If you're doing fiber prints, everything takes longer. Fiber, just think fiber longer, fiber longer. It always, always takes longer than you're gonna want it to. You know, it might be my black magic switcher. That thing is, it's pretty bright, but I've got, I've got two layers of ruby lith on it. You know what, I might just, I might just cover it with, the, with its main cover and see if, that, uh, see if that gets me there. All right, how's, uh, how's the comment section looking? Welcome everybody, thanks for being patient, fumbling along with me. All right. <laughs> We're like the Romans, our entertainment is you in the dark room. <laughs> awesome, all right. Perfect. Uh, William, uh, all this tells us is the pros aren't perfect, mistakes are okay. You know what? This is real. Like, this is not a highlight reel. That's another thing I like about live. There's some back and forth. There's some organic interaction. And yeah, it is real. You're going to fail a lot. Like, you're, you never see the mistakes of people in galleries, in, unless the show is specifically their mistakes, but most people are not willing to share that kind of stuff. And that's what I enjoy about the nature of a live stream. It's it's about as raw as you can get it. Even when you have things planned and have notes, things still like happen. They happen all the time. Okay. <laughs> uh, in the chat, we have Amanda, a good friend of mine. She's south of Columbus in Circleville. Uh, she says, so fogged, it's spooky. If you wanna see the absolute queen of spooky prints, check out Amanda's work. Uh, Amanda, are you at, uh, at Amanda's, Amanda Fields Fiction? on Instagram. You should drop your Instagram in there if it lets you put links in. But Amanda's work is really, really cool. Shout out to her. Okay. Uh, let's see. Lars, I have paper that was stored badly in a warm environment for 30 years or more. Dropping an unexposed sheet into the developer, it would turn black immediately. Yes. Uh, that's not, not something you want to have happen, but it can, uh, you know, it definitely can happen. Okay. Uh, paper. Auxiliary paper. There's always extra paper in the dark room. So I think I, I think I used some of this as well. Maybe this is actually what I used. Maybe I'm thinking of a different paper. No, there we are. So this is some, now we're mixing and matching. This is actually not um, Ilford what I'm using now. This is a paper, whoops. That one doesn't matter too much. This is Ultrafine Elite RC. Ultrafine is a paper that does not get a good wrap, but I have made so many nice prints on Ultrafine papers. It's just a really good discount EDU brand. Ultrafine is kind of like Publishers Clearinghouse of photography stuff, and they've got, they've got some good papers. They have their Silver Eagle um, fiber papers. The one thing I will say about their papers, they need to be toned. If you don't tone these papers, they're going to look ugh. All right, since I'm already on five, everything's set. I'm going to hit it with my number five time first. So five seconds. Whoop. Four, three, two, one. Yeah, I'm just going to hit it with another second. There we go. All right. Go into number double zero. We're going to do some dodge. And five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Another few seconds without the dodge. Okay. And now we're going to burn. So burning, again, all I'm doing is I'm just letting a very small amount of that light through with this card. See how that does. 
All right, toss it in. Hopefully this print doesn't have fixer fingers, but if it does, it does. Change to camera two, slap it in, minute on the clock. Um, off to my left, if you're wondering how I know the time, there's a little Gray Lab timer, a little Gray Lab 300 on the wall here in the Midwest Photo Dark Room, and that's just tracking. It's just constantly rolling. What I do is I, I glance over when I throw the print in. Oh, Jesus Christ, that's even worse. What is happening? I thought that paper was good. All right, I guess we're going to fiber. Wow, that was like really bad. I don't, well, no, there's nothing else that could be producing more fog. Goodness, yeah, that's, that's black. Well, that is why we check, we throw a test sheet in before the live stream starts. I didn't get to do that today. And this is what we are rewarded with. Am I at a black screen? Okay, no, we're not, I'm not black or the screen's not black, so we're good. All right, let's get a towel and I'm gonna throw a, yeah, I'm gonna throw a piece of fiber in and hopefully that's that's gonna uh, do, do a good job. Let me check the comments here. How are we doing? Uh, Sebastian, Ultrafine, isn't it rebranded FOMA? Um, no, I actually used this paper the other day. Um, so it shouldn't be, like I used it with all this same stuff. So it shouldn't be, but again, curious, uh, curious eyes can uh, open things up and look at them when, when we don't want them to. And that can, cause, that can cause extra fogging. But because you mentioned it, it is worth talking about not all papers have the same uh, the same safe light requirements. Some can't use any of these OC or orange safe lights. Some of them have to use completely red safe lights. Um, these safe lights are calibrated for like most, most papers, Ilford papers. They have, these lights on their own have a 10 minute working time. So that's 10 minutes from the time it's out. And for a small dark room with one person at a time, that should be more than enough. All right, so I'm gonna open up my Ilford and go from there. And if I still can't get it from there, well, I've got a jacket that I can throw over my, over my switcher <laughs> in the event that that's what's causing it. But I, I really don't think it is. I think something else zany is happening, but we don't have time to solve that mystery. That's why you bring extra paper. So this is the good stuff. This is some 11 by 14 fiber paper. Now, this paper, you can probably tell, is oversized compared to, uh, compared to the contact printing frame that I'm currently using. That is, uh, that's a problem. Because when I smash this down, it's gonna, it's gonna create this weird lip that's going on on the print. I normally trim this paper ahead of time. Another solution, is I can squeeze, uh, I can squeeze my paper down uh, with a with a printing easel. That can really, really help. I'm actually going to put these in a drawer really quick, just in case something is not safe, not safe light wise. Um, there is another contact frame though. I can't remember if this one is better or worse with big paper. I think this one. I think this one will actually work. So we're gonna play, whoop. Oh, see, good thing I hit the, good thing I hit that. All right, we're gonna put this down. Oh man, if you guys could see off camera, the place is smaller than you think and there is no free space right now. Everything that can be taken up is being taken up. Now, I don't recommend doing this with uh, with a print, ooh, all right. I may have to commit a cardinal sin because I think I'm out. I'm I'm out of all my trimmed paper. Ooh, uh, do I want to? Do I actually want to tear it? I don't want to tear it. All right, can I just? Ooh, yeah, I can. I can give her some bend. 
Mm, no, that's not that's not great. Let's let's cut a strip. I'm going to oh, I'm just gonna give it a crease. There we go. I think we're gonna be printing that 12 by 20 stuff faster than uh, faster than I said. <laughs> That's what I think. All right, all right. Extra dirty. We have some deckled edges on our paper. Uh, for those of you that are keeping count at home, that was about $11 of silver gelatin I just threw out. Good thing I got that donation earlier. All right, lock this in. Let's go. All right, we're at double zero. Let's put nine seconds on. One, two, okay. Should be good there. Let's go expose. Nine seconds, go. All right. Okay. Let's do some burn. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And some number five. You only about six seconds of this. All right, let that go. And we'll check on the comments. I see some crossed fingers in there. Yeah, let's hope. This is too much pain otherwise. Oh God, all right. Let's put in this fiber. Let's switch our camera. Switch to number two. All right, and we'll drop her in. Now, because this is a fiber print, we need a longer printing time. We need to throw this in developer for minimum 90 seconds, preferably 120. I know some people go even, even more, upwards of 180 seconds. Now the paper is gonna start out nice and curly whirly, and then it is going to get kind of floppy, so we have to watch it. All right, how are we looking here? I don't see anything that looks like horrendous fog yet, but we'll see. Oh, this is good. That's what we like. The paper looks like garbage, but you know, that's that's here nor there. I just wanna see something with, with decent density. Yeah, someone was someone got in this dark room and was extra curious. So don't leave your stuff in the dark room, kids. Heard it here first. Okay, yeah, that's good. Is the print where I want it to be? Absolutely not, but we'll get there. Now there is something negative about <laughs> negative uh, about making a print like this in the very dirty manner that I have. So do you see uh, how it goes completely black to the edges? Any seasoned darkroom printer will tell you, you do not want to go all the way to the edges with the like the D-Max or like maximum black on the print. Because what's going to happen is over the course of all the washing and touching and moving around of the print that you're doing, all right, I got five seconds, drip it off, throw it in there, whoops, get it all the way in the stop. Over the course of that printing time, your print is going to fray at the edges. I find that these prints usually start fraying. If I go all the way to the edge like this, they start fraying by, I don't know, like the, the fixer or wash stage. And if you use like a squeegee or something to, you know, rake the print like this, it's, it's a goner. So in addition to extra developing time, we need extra stop time, more emulsion, thicker paper, more time. So fiber is more money, more time, more everything. We've been in here about 20, 30 seconds. Start dripping it off. And we're gonna move to the fix. Now I have to have it in the fix about five minutes before I wanna turn those lights on. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll wrangle some of y'all's comments. Hopefully we have some, uh, some happy attendees. I hope, uh, you know, are you not entertained, right? Uh, <laughs> Uh, let's see, did my camera cut off? Okay, good, it's still going. So yes, we have we have a picture. Is it the picture I wanted? No, it never is, especially live. But you're kind of seeing things, seeing things raw. All right, let's take a look at the comments. All right. All 
Uh, Bob says, if someone exposed the paper to light, would the edges of the stack be fogged, not the whole, uh, the whole sheet? Well, somebody can really just, like, take it out of there. It's, I know that sounds silly, but yeah, th those things can, those things can happen. Like, someone's like, oh, what's in the bag? Like, um, if, if you want to, like, lose your faith in humanity completely, all you have to do is go on to auction sites and look up darkroom paper or large format film, and there's always a listing where someone who doesn't know what the materials are has completely taken it out of the bag to show you that there are in fact 10 sheets in there and in doing so of course has made all of our worst nightmares come true and fog the materials okay uh so <laughs> amanda we're seeing what happens in darkness that most people won't talk about yeah it's uh it's tough stuff all right but we have a print it's not looking too bad yeah, uh, that, that print is looking pretty good. Uh, we won't really know how, how everything looks until we do turn it on after fixing and seeing that we are getting some clean white, but I can already, I can already tell. Like, another thing about printing in a space long enough, so kind of having a home team advantage, is when you print in a space over and over again, you just get used to those little things where oh, I know what it looks like with the light off. I'm pretty sure. Like, you're never 100%, but you're like, okay, I, I see this is getting getting good. It's getting exciting. Uh, so how are we doing? Oh, cool. We have someone that needs to be banned from chat. Cool. All right. Hide that. Great. Um, let's see. Hey, we got Jesse in the chat. Hey, good stuff. <laughs> Carl, more mo fiber, mo better. Absolutely, fiber paper is fiber paper is the favorite and the one people like selling and working with for a reason. It's more archivally stable. It is more sensitive to these changes though too. So it's more sensitive than changes to exposure, and it needs more done to it. But the prints last a lot, lot longer even with like so-so treatment. So it's been uh, it's been a couple minutes of farting around. I'm gonna go ahead and pop the light on, and. I don't know if I have a tray. Yeah, I've got a display tray I can bring and show you what it looks like. But then, um, oh my gosh, sorry, 2.30. We're going to get right to the main event. I'm going to get some 12 by 20 out and uh, we'll print those because I'm. that's what I'm most excited about. I promised you some stuff you've never seen before. We're going to get right to that. So let's get a preview tray. Underneath the giant eight-foot darkroom sink here at the Midwest Photo Darkroom, there is also um, all the trays, one could ever need all right oh you know what that's actually looking that's, that's looking pretty good okay so prints and then the lights so uh we're looking we're looking pretty good we're looking a little we are looking a little uh a little bleachy in the highlights uh, this needs more exposure. This area typically, when I give it more of that numbers double zero exposure, brings this down to like a really deep dull gray, and I can just barely see the difference between the paper base and these deep shadows in here. So the other nice thing about having negatives with a lot of good density in them is you can always print that negative down. You can just keep going and going and going. So yeah, uh, this print just needs more, I would say, more number double zero or more number double zero time and more number five time to get printing but this is the actual process of darkroom printing it's not magic it, it well it is it feels like magic the first time you get it but then to redo it a bunch of times it, that's like the true true magic but yeah we've got that ah, should i do one more mm, fiber does take i want to get a better one i want to show you guys what this what this negative can do really stretch its legs so i'm going to I'm going to regroup. I'm going to take this from its fix, throw it into some rinse, and it's going to need to rinse for a good amount of time now, folks. It's going to need, like, that fiber paper, if I'm just using water, is going to need upwards of an hour of washing time. If I'm doing something, um, if I'm doing something like hypo clearing agent or wash aid, that's going to reduce that time, but it's, you know, that's more baths, and when you do big prints, you run out of space for those baths really quickly. Okay, lights are going down. Ooh, hey, I can see the computer screen now. I can see comments again. All right. <laughs> Photo Nick, 12 by 20 enlargements from Lomo 110. Yeah, for real. All right. Cool, cool, cool. Oh, uh, Carl asked, that's from Ariel. Oh, oh no. 
Oh, okay, the battery finally died, but that's all right. I came, I came ready. I have a backup battery for my main camera. Don't go away, folks, please don't leave. We're here, we're large format live in the darkroom space. Follow the sound of my voice to sweet, sweet black and white tones. Battery's going in, camera's going on. Okay, we're back. Hopefully it shows up on y'all's side here very shortly. But, uh, all right, I'm gonna pop one more fiber into that tray. I really wanna show what this negative is capable of doing. One, two, I'm just gonna do one. All right. So what I did there was I, I did a very, very tiny tweak to the, I made a very tiny tweak to my aperture because I did move that just in case it was like some sort of gross overexposure, but it wasn't, there was some weird fogging going on. So I'm gonna pull my piece of fiber out. I'm gonna fold it, I'm gonna crease it and ruin it. Now, for those of you that are, are seasoned darkroom printers, you're probably wondering, Matt, you can use that piece of fiber paper. You don't have to waste it. You can put it to some use, and I am gonna put this one to use. I'm gonna save this with the rest of my stuff, and I'm gonna make this a, a test strip. Now this emulsion does have a little bit of flexibility. You can, you can give it like a bit of a wiggle, but once that, once that gelatin creases, there's little, there's little you can do. It's, it's never fun. We hate to see it. I'm gonna try to straighten this out. Do, 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 like that. Okay. Ugh. Ugh. Oh no. It got my glove. All right. Eh, that's not 100% straight, but that's fine. Okay. We are at, still at number five. I'm gonna go to, let's go seven seconds and go. Okay. Do, 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 do. We're printing. The light's hitting it. Let's go. Cool. Go to nine seconds. Go to the old double zero. See the other thing I like about having the roller on here? I can just woof, just crush that wheel over. Okay, we're gonna go. Let's dodge, 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 dodge. Great. And we're gonna burn. And we're gonna burn for a while. Okay. And I'm just counting in my head. Some people like having a metronome on in here, or you can listen to your favorite podcast, like the Film Photography Podcast, or Analog Talk, or, you know, any of them. <laughs> Great. Really get that corner burned in there. There's a tree branch that looks really cool when I give it the right amount. Okay, let's print this baby. All right, switch in my source, number two. Diffuse that, throw that in. I gotta look at the clock. Oh, perfect, okay. It was at the 45, so when I pull it, it's going to go all the way around, and I'm gonna pull it at the 15. So 60 second clock, 45, you know, that sort of thing. Okay coming in. The edges are coming in first. That's great because those are going to be jet black. Now, I used to get really scared when I would see areas that had like a bubble where it like wasn't coming in full density. Don't worry about those little bubbles. They're usually going to even themselves out. That's usually the impact, like the moment it hit the tray. Oh yeah, this is looking pretty good. So if you actually want to see where, you know, where and when this image was created, this was actually made for an episode of LFF back in May or June of 2021. So this was a, a hazy morning at Cedar Falls and man, was it. Okay, I, re oh, I kind of want to take it out, but it needs another, needs another 30 seconds. So all I'm doing is I'm flipping it, moving it around with the tongs. You can also rock your trays. You can also swish it around by hand. Everybody has their own like feel and workflow they like to do with it. There's no right or wrong answer. Well, the only wrong answer is not moving the print. You need to move the developer around, make sure it's getting adequate coverage. 
and you want to leave it in that minimum of 90 seconds to make sure you get that maximum black or D-max. So drip it off, bring it in the stop. 30 seconds in the stop, I'm going to change my camera angle to the main. Hopefully the battery hasn't gone off. Okay, hasn't gone off. Goodness gracious, uh, for the tech nerds at home, this camera is at ISO 8000, which is like, come on, it's insane. Can film do this? Not without an extreme darkroom technician behind the helm. All right, how are we doing here? Oh, hey, Doan, thanks for the five bucks. I appreciate you. Best LF channel ever. Thank you so much, sir. I appreciate that. Very, very cool. Cool, cool, cool. All right, uh, please part. Oh, uh, Chili Kyan says, please pardon the extreme nude question, but why can you have un unexposed paper out with a red light on, but not most unexposed film? Oh, that's a great question. And some folks in the chat are already addressing it. But the main reason you can't have, oops, I got to get this into the fixer. Um, the main reason you can't have ortho film out under a, a safe light as bright as what we have here is because the ISO of that paper or film. The more sensitive your materials are, the faster they're going to get fogged by any other contaminated light or even a quote unquote safe light. Again, there's no such thing as a completely safe, safe light. There is a threshold built into that emulsion that once you cross it, you're done. It's not going to, it's not going to work the way you want it to. Okay, cool. We're in the fix. It's looking good there. I'm going to pop this. I feel good about the print. It's not perfect. I wanted to be a little bit further with maybe two or three iterations, but I'm going to take what I can get with those, uh, with those foggy pieces of paper we saw before. All right. So what's the lesson that we learned today? Pack in, pack out with your paper and films, especially if you're working in a college space, rental space, communal space. This is why I have trust issues. All right. The print is still in the fix. I'm going to move that around a little bit off camera. And then I promised some 1220, and I want the 1220 to happen. So I got to move this stuff around to make sure that it can. All right. Juggle my. Juggle my fiber prints. Oh, that's looking, that's looking marvelous. Can't wait to turn the lights on and show you how that looks. Um, all right, okay. I've got two sheets of big old 12 by 20 that I do want to commit to today's stream. And hopefully we can get there. Oh man. Hey, if you're just tuning in, welcome to Large Format Live. My name is Matt Mirage. Large Format Fridays, every other Friday, we're here and we're talking about things large format. Today, we're doing something that doesn't need to be large format, but it is because why not? We're in the darkroom making contact prints. This is done anytime you place your film right over your light sensitive paper and you shine a light on it. That's all you need. You don't even need a darkroom, but having a darkroom makes things easier. It's facilitating in terms of, you know, having running water, good ventilation, controllable lights with uh, with like a timer and an aperture. So all those things really add up to that workflow. All right, how are we doing on the questions? Perfect. All right, hey Graham, welcome to the, uh, welcome to the live. Perfect. Okay, so we're still at over 100 folks. That is pretty freaking awesome. I'm gonna turn on the light. I'm gonna try to maneuver a print so it doesn't hurt anything else. Last thing you want to do before you turn the lights on, you always want to do like a, a final check. Is there anything out? You know, is my fiber paper sealed with the piece of safety tape to make sure it doesn't get exposed? Now it's good. Now the keen-eyed will remember I put a piece of paper here. I said I was going to use it as a test strip, but I'm also going to show you the most valuable tool in the darkroom space. Actually, if anybody, if anybody here knows what the most valuable tool is in the, in the entire darkroom, I haven't shown it yet on the channel, but go ahead and type it in the comments. What's the most valuable tool in the darkroom? It might not be what you think it is. All right. Uh, Dev, the prints are going, uh, are going pretty good. All right. Answer, answer anybody. The most valuable tool in the darkroom? 
Flogged. Oh, Mark Full got it. The trash can. Don't be afraid to throw away the prints and the papers that just aren't happening. Don't, don't be afraid to throw it away. Toss it out. When in doubt, throw it out. Okay, lights are going up. Uh, Dev, here's the, uh, here's the one print that isn't fogged and turning out decently so far. So, oh yeah, this looks, this is actually pretty close to, this is actually, yeah, this is the final print. All right. All right, chat, what do you think? I think we got a good one. I think we got a good one. I think this looks, I think this looks good. We got the highlights. We're just, oop, we're just ever so, just ever so bright right here. Just a little, just a little crispy highlight. We have some nice information in the shadows. So when you use that split contrast printing, again, so I'm using different colors of light on multi-grade or multi-contrast paper, I can eke out information in my deep shadows. And then with that lower contrast light and extra burning, I can eke out some more information in the highlights. Whew, that was a lot of work. But hey, we got a print. And as long as I rinse this out for the appropriate amount of time, it's gonna last 100 years. Pretty sweet. Okay, I'm gonna pop that into the water, change my glove, and we're gonna go to what I promised. And keep promising the 12 by 20. So I'm gonna rinse this. Uh, yeah, I'll just rinse my hands, it's fine. Okay, so if you've subscribed to the channel for a while now, you know that late last year, not late last year, middle of last year, I introduced my CanHam 12 by 20 to the channel and I haven't done a lot of updates on it because I wanted to wait for bonus Fridays. So those Fridays on months where we have five Fridays, there's a few of them coming up later this year and those are gonna be ultra large format Fridays. Hold me to it, chat. But ultra large format Friday is anytime we have an extra Friday within the month. And uh, here's the negatives I'm printing today. So back, um, so back later on in the summer, I had an amazing opportunity uh, to assist for Mr. Stephen Takis, and we were teaching a dry plate tin type workshop at the Penland School of Craft. And while we were there, we had run of the facilities, and I got to, I brought my 12 by 20 because of course I did. I love landscapes, and we were in the middle of the mountains, and that's all I had to do was, was print. So I brought some film, brought the camera, and I exposed and made some negatives. I did make some mistakes on those negatives along the way. Maybe I'll have to do a DIY darkroom about how I saved these negatives. But you can see this uh, is a bit thinner than what I would consider like a good negative. But I've got my notes, and it's very similar to the last print where I have some grade five and some grade double zero stuff going on. And fingers crossed, we'll be able to get some good stuff out of this. Now, I didn't bring my ginormous contact print frame in here. I did try some prints where I just laid this hefty piece of film on top of the RC paper. It actually looks pretty good. Is it as sharp as I could get it? Probably not, but it's going to suffice for what we're doing today. And we're gonna make an RC 12 by 20 contact print. So I'm gonna organize the rest of this stuff. Oh, uh, by the way, the film that, uh, actually the film that I'm using for all of this, no, not all of this. Uh, this is a sheet of HP5. You can, always, you can always see which one is HP5 because you get, oh, did I lose? Did my battery already die? Sorry, folks. You can always tell which one is HP5 because you have the creases in here. So you have, this is called your notch code. You have one semicircle and then followed by two more. That's HP5. If it was reversed, ah, if it was reversed, it would be FP4. Okay, so got my negative. I don't need my burn card. I don't think, no, I don't need my burn card. I'm gonna cut my lights. All right, how's chat doing? Y'all y'all hype about <laughs> too dense again. Oh man, this has turned into an ASMR stream. Yeah, kind of. All right. Unlucky, but you know what? It happens. This is real. I'd rather real than, you know. Uh, it's not a battery problem, Laura. I think it's like a, um, like a timeout problem. I thought I disabled that, but sometimes it's not. All right. Got my big sheet of film. 
I'm gonna pre-dial in my timer. So I'm at, I'm at the double zero right now. So I'm gonna do three and a half seconds. So that's, I'll round it to four. That's, uh, yeah, I'll stop it right at the end. And then 12 seconds at number five. Okay, perfect. Get my paper out. Now this is some big 16 by 20 paper that I stripped down. When you're working ultra large format, your paper options become limited. You have to go with rolls or big pre-cut sheets that you may need to strip down. If you are a seasoned, you know, you wanna print more in the darkroom or you want to get into ultra large format, I would strongly, strongly recommend getting a, like a big paper cutter, like a Rota trim. You can also look into getting a, a good, what's called rotary cutter. Rotary cutters are used in the fabric industry. Just never use it for fabric after that. Always use it for just paper. Okay, that was a mouthful. So I'm gonna open up. I'm gonna grab out my paper. <laughs> okay. You know what? I'm gonna do a test strip on this one because I'm paranoid and I wanna make sure I got it. I don't use a lot of test strips, not because I'm like that good or anything, but I try to preview like the whole thing, but this will just tell me really quick if my f-stop looks good. No, it says f5.6, so that's wide open on this lens. Okay, I'll just confirm it anyway. Just gonna grab my big old thing out, throw my negative sleeve off camera, line this up. Great, three and a half seconds, double zero, go. One, two, three, half second, great. Going to number five, again, I'm split grade printing this. Need about 12 seconds on the timer, and Boop. All right. Doing a little bit of dodging, just preventing light from hitting those thinner overall areas. Hopefully that does what I want it to do. Switching my camera over. And, oh, we just hit the zero. Sweet, so we're at a fresh minute. And let's watch our print come in. Covering it in our developer, flipping it over, get it moving around. Oh yeah, here it comes. Now this should have, this should have some, some nice pops, some nice contrast. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh yeah, she's coming in deep. Oh, is it coming in too deep? Ah, we'll find out once we turn the light on. Yeah, it's coming in a little too deep. I'm gonna close down that half stop. I thought it was open, but it wasn't. It was halfway. This is why we test strip. You can also do a test strip where you have, uh, where you have multiple exposures and you just hide part of the paper while that's running. I, I just like seeing the whole thing at that exposure. So I would just be wasting more test strips if I did that. Drip it off, throw it into the stop while it's waiting on the stop bath. 10 seconds. That's usually by the time I flip it and peek at it. And then drip it, drip and drain. Whoops, come on. RC prints can get unwieldy if you use tongs. It definitely takes practice to not mar the print. If you, let me switch cameras real quick. If, if you take a, RC print and you jab it or bend it or do anything really to the RC paper, it can fracture and those little dimples and things, the creases, those don't come out on RC paper. Some fiber prints, you can, you can, you know, wet it, wash it and press it and minimize the appearance of it. But RC prints, no way. Those are going to be like unsavable. So RC paper, you know, anymore with the cost of materials being as high as it is, RC paper is two thirds to three quarters of the price of fiber. So it might be worth considering um, just going to fiber once you feel confident. Um, another question, I'll have to check chat for questions. Another common question about printing is, can I go from RC to fiber? Yes, kind of. So when you jump from RC to fiber, you get, you get a change in contrast because again, they're different emulsions and a lot of people say, 
you're going to have about a stop difference. So the fiber papers tend to have like an F stop more like punch. So the blacks go blacker, the whites stay, you know, nice and crispier. And the new Ilford multigrade papers are really close. They're within like, they're probably within a half stop of each other from when I've played around with them, but uh, stay within brand. If you jump brands, you're not going to have much hope of ch uh, changing from one paper to another. Same goes with enlargers. Not all enlargers, light sources are created equal, so you're going to have to test for your own materials. That's why you never want to just like jump into somebody's darkroom. You don't know the way around. You don't know those little quirks about the tools. Okay, I'm going to turn the lights up. Do, uh, well, before, before I turn the lights up, I'm doing a check, making sure I don't have any paper. Good. Well, I don't have any paper out in the open, so that looks good. Turning my lights up. Oh, I think you guys, I think you guys are going to be happy, happy that you waited. So there's my prints. I'm just going to back off my time a teeny tiny bit, but this is looking, this is looking really nice. The fog over in here is nice. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to do that half, hmm. Yeah, I'm going to do that half step adjustment and I'm going to reduce my, I think I'm going to reduce my number five time. Yeah, I think that's all I'm going to do. But that's looking really, really, really nice. I'm going to check comments, make sure we're doing, doing okay. Um, this paper, again, is not fiber. It is RC. Is it perfect? No, but a uh, few things I do are. Okay, how... How are we looking in chat? Great. Now I got some folks, I got some folks uh, judging the RC. Oh, come on. Let's go camera, wake up. Sorry folks, extra black, this dark room, it's dark. You're just joining us, the flickering lights live stream. This is a uh, large format live. We're here in the darkroom space. Wrangling this all myself. My name is Matt Mirage. We're printing some 12 by 20 negatives on some RC paper. Why RC? Uh, because they didn't have any fiber that was big enough for me. So, oh well. RC is great. I can lay it on. I don't even need a contact print frame and it holds sharpness very, very nicely. Things I'm going to do to adjust the RC test strip I just showed off before the camera cut out. Um, yeah, I think I'm just going to do... <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to move a half stop down. So I was wide open, half stop down. That's one click. A lot of these lenses are half stop increments, so half click, full click, that sort of thing. How are we looking? Yeah, you know, some... Uh, there's folks arguing in the comments, RC versus fiber. I, I like them both. You have to be in the darkroom to print both of them. If you go to most commercial labs that offer true color, true, you know, true color prints, most of them are printing on RC materials because fiber materials just can't be handled by all machines. And most of these are machine printed where they're, they're taking a, an LED or laser light source and they're exposing the paper. Not many operations can do that on fiber. There are a handful, but it's very, very expensive because the equipment is very specialized and really expensive. Okay, next print. We're gonna do a full one. We're going for it. I was about a half stop dark from where I wanted to be, so I'm gonna pull the big boy out. Okay, I'm gonna start with it flipped down just to minimize any sort of excess fog. Still paranoid about the fog earlier. I'm gonna put my paper back in the box, back in the bag. If you have big paper, you probably want to invest in a big paper safe, a place to, to put all of that paper. Take my negative, lay it on top. It's holding contact like a boss, no curling edges. This is some nice flat HP5. I didn't mention the film that the first print was made on. The first print was made on um, Ilford Delta, or it was made on Ilford Fiber, but the film was Ilford Delta 100. Okay, so we're at number five. We're gonna do that 12 seconds again. Ready and, boop, do a little dodge. Make a little print, get down tonight. All right. 
great. We love it. We're going to go up to double zero. We're going to give it four seconds. One, two, three, four. Okay. We're going to cut to our second camera. Thanks for everybody that's tuning in so far. Large format live. We got our first full 12 by 20 sheet going in the sauce right now. Just hit the tray. Minute on the clock. Let's flip it over. Move it around. I'm actually going to rock the tray this time. I want to make sure I get that developer moving. Rock back and forth. Rock up and down. Back and forth. Up and down. Here it comes. She is coming in. That is looking pretty cool. It's a little dark, but I'm liking it. I got 10 seconds left. See, this is the part that sucks. I want to I wanna snatch it out now, but you got to wait. You got to wait that full time. If you pull it early, you might not get as dark a black value as you want. Put it in the stop. Throw it in face down. Make sure it's adequately covered. Shift it around. Now flip it. There we go. That's nice and stopped. Drip it all the way off. I don't want to kill my fixer too soon. It shouldn't, but re removing as many cross contaminants as possible is a good practice. I'm going to change my camera angle real quick. Back to the main one. I'm going to answer some questions. Thank you so much for being patient, hanging out, chatting, sweating. Is he going to make a print? Is it going to come out? Oh, all right. So y'all have kind of seen behind the curtain. You're seeing the raw, real experience of the darkroom because many, many darkroom videos that you are going to see people put out there, they take a while. I know very, very few people that are able to just go in and make an amazing print. And you saw it, even with the notes, things happen. Contamination happens, fogging happens. That's, that's the real stuff. That's, that's what actually being, being someone that's, that enjoys the hands-on and printing process, these are the, the things that happen. Some days, the things that happen add to the look and feel. Other days, it makes you feel like, why do I even do this? So, all right, how are we doing here? All right. Uh, Michael asks, where are my thoughts on using two 8x10s to make an 8x20? Um, yeah, you can, uh, you can stitch them together for a panorama or like physically lay the prints together. I've seen really, really well done executions of that. I've even seen people that do like dry plates and wet plates in that manner. Um, there's one darkroom technician and photographer who I would uh, recommend you check out. His name is Matthew Magruder. I believe he's, I think he's down in Texas. He might be out in California now, but yeah, um, Matt Magruder. He's another one of my like, you know, like uh, kind of like, not B-side, but like deep cut. There we go. Deep cut's the term I'm thinking of. He's like the deep cut 12 by 20 shooter. Very few other folks that aren't shooting large format have like, who's that? But he does some really good stuff. He did a lot of uh, constructed images with a bunch of eight by tens or a bunch of ultra large format uh, pictures. So definitely a viable method. It's definitely something you can go for. Thanks for everybody who's tuned in. We're large format live here from the darkroom space at Midwest Photo. I'm turning on the light. It's time to show a print. Y'all have endured, endured every, every little fail known to man so far. Let's see if this print actually, actually made it. We're going to turn the light up. Ooh, guys, I think this is worth the wait, but you tell me. Okay. How we looking? Pretty freaking sweet, right? Handmade, nothing digital. Well, I'm bringing, to, I'm bringing this to you digitally, but nothing digital about this process. Light was exposed to film. I took it in the dark. I tray processed the sheets. Once those were dry, I brought them in here, laid it on some paper in the dark. You saw it happen. 
And this is what we got. Is it a lot of work? Yes, but it feels like I made something. I made a lot of mistakes too, but I do that cooking. Just ask Lore in the chat. But when you get it, it all feels worth it. And let me see if I can do this on camera. Contact prints, they sharp. They sharp, sharp. Oh, my camera was overheating. Guys, I know what was happening now. The camera is overheating. All right, I'm going to cut to camera two. I'm going to wrangle some chat. Here, you can look at the print here. I'm just going to delicately balance it over the, <laughs> over the other tray, and you can take a look at, uh, at that print. You know what? I, it's 310 already. Um, I actually have a class here in a little bit. So I'm going to um, I'm going to just answer some questions in chat. I'll turn the cam the face cam on just a quick second to you know say the goodbyes and everything. But I think we are ready to uh, wrap this thing up. So uh, what's everybody think of the print? Let me know in the comments. Um, Laura, I'm going to have you drop a link. Oh, I was going to do announcements, and I didn't even do a lot of those announcements. That's okay. Maybe Laura's been keeping up with it. All right. So Carl asked, what was the ISO on that image again? Oh, the, um, the main camera I'm using is like 8,000 or something, but it's one of the Sony's that's not supposed to overheat, but it has been going for about an hour now. So that, you know, that kind of happens. Um, Lars, yeah, Matt's stuff is really, really cool. Okay, now, yeah, now we're seeing the print. See, guys, this is the this is the thing that gets you hooked. Once you see the ground glass or a contact print, that's it, man. Like, there's no going back. Nothing like a large format contact print, especially nothing like an ultra large format contact print. That's that's the stuff. Oh, uh, Carl was asking the film speed. So this is some HP5, very expired. This HP5 is from the year 2002. So I exposed it at ISO 100 and I developed it with a little bit of benzo triazole. By the way, if you want to know what foreign language I'm speaking, uh, it's darkroom. DIY darkrooms are going to show up once, uh, once a month on Wednesdays here on the channel. So be sure to get subscribed and uh, I'm going to teach you some, uh, some of this stuff. Uh, or you can just buy the darkroom cookbook and, and read ahead. <laughs> but um, I developed this film in a manner that allowed me to overcome its fog. And I shot this at ISO 100, developed it in my uh, pyro developer, but then I also intensified the negative because I messed up uh, with some sepia toning. So all sorts of m messy stuff uh, got me this negative, but this negative also got me this wonderful print. So I'm, uh, I'm pretty, pretty happy about that. Um, shameless promotion time. I know some folks have donated to the stream and I appreciate you so much. If you want to buy this print, like this exact print, I'm going to put this up for sale um, later on today on mirage.com. So you can go to mirage.com forward slash prints and uh, you're going to see uh, you're going to see some contact prints on there, including the fiber that I just made earlier, as well as this 12 by 20 RC. All right. Very, very cool. Folks are digging it. Love it. Uh, Chili Cayenne, 617. And like any panoramic format, they just have a, a beautiful look to them. I love it. It's, uh, it's something I want to keep doing. I, I'm, I'm falling back in love with uh, goofier formats that aren't just, uh, aren't just 8x10. And if you subscribe to the channel, you'll see more of that goofy stuff coming up here relatively soon. All right, I'm gonna turn the main camera back on and switch to it uh, so I can say goodbyes and thank yous and all that fun stuff. So switching to the main cam, bringing it over, should be coming over. Thank you all so much for joining us today. Uh, large form, oh, did it? Did it go? Did it not go? There we go, yeah. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Large Format Friday, Large Format Live here from the Darkroom at Midwest Photo. You can check out this rental darkroom space at mpex.com. You can click rentals and check out the rental darkroom. You can also check out, I have some upcoming classes in this very space. Tomorrow I'm gonna to be teaching a select group of folks how to develop their own black and white film. I think that one might be full, but 
If you want to learn how to print in the very space you're seeing here, you can also check out, there's a class coming up in February on black and white darkroom printing, where I'll teach you, yes, you, how to, in person, print here, make some contact prints and enlargements. Now that's going to be 35 millimeter and medium format film, but we have that going on. And again, you can also check out mirage.com forward slash prints if you want to pick up a print that you saw me make here on the live today. Uh, the prints that were made on the live, I'm going to try to link to the original video. Oh, and I still have a glove on so I can sleeve this giant negative back up. You want to protect the goods. Okay, uh, again, that's going to do it. Thank you so much, everybody who hung in there with us today through all of the, this was a roller coaster of a live stream. I think I've had some worse ones before, but this one was pretty bad. Thank you so much. Go ahead and give Laura some thanks in the chat for keeping everything together, wrangling all of that good stuff. And uh, yeah, stay tuned. A couple of weeks, we're going to have another LFF, but we're also going to have some other non-LFF stuff coming to the channel here very soon as well. So take it easy, get some darkroom printing going on, and if you go out and shoot, happy shooting.